I want to show you something cool. Here is a record player. And here is a 3D printed Zoetrope. Zoetrope is a very old animation device that produced the illusion of motion by displaying a sequence of drawings or photographs. But what makes this Zoetrope interesting is that the animation is brought to life with a laser light. And of course, since this is a record player, you can also listen to music from vinyl while watching the animation. Do you want to know how I made this? Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter, I'm gonna show you anyway. Hello boys and girls, I'm Olli Huttunen. In this project I wanted to take something new and digital and combine it with something old and very analog. I have to say that the whole journey to this point is quite hybrid process, where many different softwares and hardwares are used. We use 2D and 3D graphics, we use AI and motion capture data and numerous different file formats from pixels to vector images. The purpose is not so much to make a detailed tutorial on how everything works, but to generally go through the steps of the process and list all the application and services that were needed to achieve this end result. So if you are excited, let's get started. I have admired this art form and researched a bit of the history of zoetropes. The name comes from Old Greek root words zoe, which means life, and tropos, which means turning or spinning. So loosely translated, zoetropes means wheel of life. In the old original cylinder type of zoetropes, which uses drawing or photograph, it was possible to use animation loops of 8 or 12 frames. In this plan, I calculated that I can make it fit 32 independent frames inside my cylinder. I started making the plans inside the Thinkercad program, which is a free web application for 3D designing. In there, I 3D modeled the parts of the central cylinder, to which I could then easily attach the separately printable animation frames. I got the original idea to this laser zoetrope from a 3D printing community, where I saw this first prototype made by Xavier G. I decided to make some modification of my own to the plan and also designed the parts with which it could be mounted over the record player. When I got the basic blocks printed and the easily connected comp part working, it convinced me that the device will work, so it was time to start making the animation itself. Although animation can mean many things, at least for me, the first things that comes to mind is some sort of a cartoon character that moves funny. So let's start with the character creation. Today we have a huge variety of artificial intelligence tools that can be used to create different concept designs just from a text prompt or from some very simple graphical shapes. And the newest of them are able to produce 3D models. So for this I chose the Messy AI service from the internet where I started to create a 3D character with different keywords. After a while and few attempts later I managed to generate this Elvis looking 3D figure that seems promising enough. Here it was not so important how high quality the character looked in three dimensions and how successful the textures were created for it. The end result would later be reduced to just a 2D outlines drawings anyway, so it was enough 
that the character's recognizability was mostly visible. In Meshi AI it is possible to save the model in several common 3D formats, and what is particularly nice is that the model can also be exported directly in Blender format. Which brings us to the next step. Before I started to prepare this Elvis character for animation, I wanted to correct its shapes a bit in Blender. The AI generation often leaves some parts of the limbs fused together, so I spent some time fixing and cutting these parts apart. I also edited and emphasized some of the character's features, such as nose, so that they would be more visible. And then it was time to move on to the fun phase. I exported the model out of Blender as an FBX file and transferred it into the Mixamo web service, where the character is easy to rig and prepare for animation. Mixamo is a very popular library where you can find many different motion capture movements for your 3D characters. After browsing through different dance moves for a while, I found something that could be very suitable for my Elvis figure. This twisting dance move was appropriate, but it still had to be adjusted a little to make the character's pose better. Although the animation seemed to be quite long, I exported it and took it back to the Blender for further editing, where the movement could be shortened. Since my Zoetrope only had 32 frames, the animation had to be way much shorter. Therefore, it was necessary to find the best key positions in the movement and cut it into a new entity that could be scaled to the planned duration. Working with a 3D model is great because it gives a lot of opportunities to turn the camera and look for a suitable angle from which the character's silhouette profile comes out best. When the movement and angle were in order, it was time to render the animation out as a BNG image sequence, where the character was cut out from its background. This sequence of images was then exported to the After Effects program, where I was able to use the image trace function and distinguish the outlines of the character. For this zoetrope, it is essential to be able to draw the outlines of the animation figure thick enough so that the 3D printing would be possible. And for masking and line drawing, there can be found many tools in After Effects. I used a single shape layer line to draw recognizable forms of this Elvis figure inside the outer lines like, for example, sideburns and a hairline. And of course, I also added a giant belt buckle, which is an iconic part of Elvis' accessory. The original textures rendering could very well be used as a reference for the placement of these individual details, but in the end, the outline are the most important part here. In order to get these animation frames to 3D printable condition, I needed something to change these pixel images to vector. And for that, I rendered this finished outline animation again to a BNG sequence and headed to the web service called Recraft. Recraft is basically again another AI image producing app, but it can also generate vector images and it can very precisely convert pixel images to vector shapes. So I brought all of my animation images in here for the vector conversion and then I saved them to SVG format. It required a bit of manual work as each image had to be converted one by one, but in the end 32 frames is not so much that it can't be done one at a time. And now that I had 
a bunch of these SVG vector files, it was time to start preparing to 3D print the Zoetrope. As I showed at the beginning, I designed this so-called comp part as an empty platform into which I could then merge the frames of the animation I created. Bruce Slicer is a tool path generation software which is used in 3D printing. But with this program we can also edit and make small modification to 3D models. We can bring these vector SVG files directly over Slicer's print desk and adjust their thickness. And we can also create text elements where we can type numbers so that it is easier to know which frame number of the animation is going on each comp. By connecting these blocks in the Slicer program, I was able to build procedural way of working whereby replacing the SVG image and combining the numbers, I was able to merge all the parts together and finally save them as an STL file. Of course, it meant a lot of manual work, but it had to be done because automation and AI are not yet there to save you at every point. And now that I had a bunch of these 3D printable STL files, I re-imported them back into Prusa Slicer and made printing adjustments so that I could fit as many of these comps on a single printing plate. These animation frames are only 1.2 mm thick, so they can be printed relatively quickly on PLA plastic. But when we talk about 3D printing, it of course takes several hours to create such amount of these frames to physical objects. Finally, when the printing was ready, it was quite satisfying job. Snap these frames together and attach them to the cylinder, which I created earlier. So here it is. A laser sewage rope of dancing Elvis character. Hmm, how crazy is that? The laser light which I used in here is a basic leveling laser which is commonly used in construction sites and which you can easily get from any hardware store. This one produces green laser but perhaps the most common laser leveling devices are made with the red laser. Important feature is that the laser can display a vertical line so that the 3D printed frames comes visible each time they passes through the beam. Record player's turntable turns by default with the decent speed, so the animation can be seen in suitable phases. And the best part is that if the animation hits to the right beat of the music, which is chosen to play on this strange media. What is your opinion? I think these Zoetropes turn out to be a pretty cool DIY project. I hope this was inspirational and you can leave your comment below. And by the way, if you are interested in the Zoetrope animations of mine and want to support my channel, I have put them all together in a neat package and you can find all these 3D printable parts in my Comrade store. There are all the original SVG and STL files and a total of 5 different animations that you can print with your own 3D printer. You can of course purchase the animation separately and if you want to try building your own laser zoetrope based on this video, you can find for free the digital files of the center cylinder part, the podium piece for the record player and the empty comp part designed by me in the same Gumroad store. If you decide to purchase anything from my Gumroad page, I would greatly appreciate it and it will help me make more of these videos in the future. 
all important links can be found in the description. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.